The initial cost of a monolithic dome is usually the same as that of a custom-built, conventional home of equal interior finish. However, the long-term and day-to-day -day costs of a monolithic dome will always be substantially lower. If you were to build a conventional home with materials used in the monolithic dome construction, you would spend vast amounts of money. It is the efficient shape and simple construction process that keeps the monolithic dome affordable. The monolithic dome is a superior structure built at conventional prices. Monolithic domes typically require about half as much energy to heat and cool when compared to conventional structures. These savings are achieved by using what we call the dome's thermal battery. Monolithic domes are built with reinforced concrete on the inside and polyurethane foam on the outside. The polyurethane foam acts as a barrier to outside weather changes, while the concrete absorbs temperature fluctuations inside the home. Lee and Cindy Quintens of Edgerton, Kansas, moved from a 1,400 square foot conventional home to a 2,700 square foot monolithic dome, but their energy bill did not increase, even though they had almost doubled their living space. Chuck and Louise Snyder, both native Alaskans, own a 3,000 square foot monolithic dome home. The home is heated by an in-floor radiant heating system, which is powered by an oil-fired furnace. In January 1999, temperatures plummeted to minus 52 degrees with the wind chill factor. One evening, Chuck noticed that the water was not as hot as it normally was, and by the next day there was no warm water at all. Upon checking the furnace, he discovered they were out of heating oil. At that point, their monolithic dome had been without heat for two days in sub-zero weather, but to their surprise, the temperature in the dome was still comfortable. Monolithic domes can also save money long-term with lower homeowners insurance premiums. When Don and Shirley Tuttle of Shamrock, Texas first looked into insuring their 2,600 square foot monolithic dome home, they were quoted an $800 annual premium. But a little education brought that premium down to just $174. The Tuttle simply had their insurer check into the fire and disaster resistance abilities of their monolithic dome. Most conventional U.S. homes are fire rated as combustible structures. One match and they're gone. Conversely, most monolithic dome homes are fire rated as non-combustible structures. They just don't burn. In the fall of 2002, a brush fire started about one mile away from Al and Ruth Braswell's home in Southern California. Temperatures that day were above the 100 degree mark and the fire spread rapidly. An on-the-scene fire captain told Mr. Braswell that if his home had been built from conventional materials, it would have burned to the ground. The fire captain also said that he had instructed his fire crew to break the doors down and take cover in the dome if they got into trouble. Amazingly, the fire went up the rise of the mountain, right over the top of the house, and caught on the other side of the dome but damage to the Braswell home was mostly cosmetic. According to the Riverside County Fire Department, it took 696 firefighters, 87 engines, 26 hand crews, two bulldozers, six helicopters, 11 airplanes, and three days to finally extinguish the Bryant fire. Dr. Arnold Wilson, engineer and former professor at Brigham Young University, extensively studies and engineers monolithic domes. In a recent article, Dr. Wilson stated that a monolithic dome is probably the most disaster-resistant building that can be built today. After Hurricanes Aaron and Opal devastated their home in Pensacola Beach, Florida, Mark and Valerie Sigler began researching building techniques that would provide stability and protection. What they discovered was the monolithic dome. Because the dome will withstand hurricanes, tornadoes, 
storm surges, termites, rising energy costs, fires, and even earthquakes, the Siglers knew that it would be a true sanctuary, a place to come home to even after a hurricane. After finding overwhelming support from neighboring families and business owners, the couple applied for and received a grant from the Federal Emergency Management Agency to help pay for their new monolithic dome home. FEMA realized that funding a small portion of the structural costs of the disaster-resistant dome would reduce their liability and exposure to future claims. This beautiful beachfront home will be completed in 2003 and will be available to the public as a vacation rental property. More and more people are embracing the style of the monolithic dome. When Jim and Melanie Caslick began construction of Cloud Hidden, their new dome home in Asheville, North Carolina, some neighbors were skeptical. But once the home was in place and neighborhood property values quickly increased, any opposition faded. The Catholics built a beautiful structure whose unassuming exterior and dramatic interior expedited the dome's acceptance into their upscale neighborhood. This monolithic dome home, designed by Larry Byrne, is another good example of the dome's unique beauty. Larry's wife, Mara Lee, was initially unenthusiastic about domes, but because Larry is Vice President of Design at Monolithic, she was able to see firsthand how you could make both the interior and the exterior become whatever you wanted. Mara Lee now readily admits that she loves the design of her home with its illusion of endless curves. Monolithic dome homes appeal to a select group of discriminating homeowners, people who want an outwardly beautiful structure, and much more. The monolithic dome is more than just a pretty facade. It is a powerhouse. It has the power to save us money and energy, and most importantly, to protect us. Every year, many new monolithic dome homes are built all over the world giving more and more people the opportunity to enjoy this unique living experience in dream homes made possible by the monolithic dome. Explore an idea that could change the way you think about heating with wood. It's called a rocket stove. It's a hyper-efficient wood stove that takes an idea from the developing world and adapts it to ours. To learn more about rocket stoves, we met up with Ashley Lubick and Rob Avis. Lubick is a natural builder, while Avis is a permaculture instructor. They were both putting on a workshop to show a dozen people how to build their own rocket. A rocket stove is really just a, a, a simple wood-burning appliance. Um, it was originally developed for cooking on, developed at the Aprovecho Research Institute for uh, cooking in developing countries. It was a way to take um, a problem which was uh, blindness and chronic lung conditions from cooking indoors as well as having to travel farther and farther to get firewood. Um, this little stove was designed so that we could minimize the amount of wood we were using, clean up the smoke and make the most of the resource without uh, deforesting areas. The rocket stove went from something used for cooking to a device used for heating. Here's a half completed one to show you how it works. It's quite a bit different than a conventional stove because the wood is fed in vertically um, and we've got this really large heat riser which, which basically creates a, a strong stack effect. And uh, because only the tips of the wood are actually getting burned, I can pull a piece out here and just show you. Um, you know, what makes this different is that uh, in a conventional wood stove, this whole piece of wood would be burning simultaneously. So we actually have a lot more control over the air to fuel mixture going through this stove, which, which ensures a very, very complete and clean combustion. The competitors to the rocket stove are masonry stoves, which start at about $15,000, or airtight stoves, which aren't quite as effective. 
While rocket stoves are going viral across North America, they're doing it on the cheap via the do-it-yourself set. It costs between $200 and $400 for a rocket stove, depending on how much scrounging you do for materials. The components of a rocket mass heater is refractory brick, so it's a high aluminum uh, content brick, which doesn't expand and contract very much. Um, this particular one is going to have two uh, steel heat risers in it, so this is just conventional oil and gas pipe, uh, a 50 gallon barrel which goes over top, and then an enormous amount of clay and sand which is what we use to make cob. The genius of it really is in the design. With its controlled efficient burn it uses far less wood than a typical stove and by running its hot flue gases through a thermal battery like a cob bench it stays useful long after the fire is out. What they've done is instead of having all of the flue gases just travel up a chimney and heat a pot, um, the flue gases um, are contained by this barrel and this barrel sits on top of the heat riser which is the little chimney inside the stove and the heat is then directed into a manifold. That heat is then directed through stovepipe that's inlaid in this cob bench. So all this thermal mass is sucking the heat out of that material, out of the flue gases before it exits the building. Uh, the big benefit of that is that all of that heat is extracted and stored in this heavy mass. So after our fire is long dead, this material will continue to radiate heat into this room, keeping it warm for anywhere from 12 to 36 to 48 hours. Will rocket stoves be replacing your home furnace? Not anytime soon, since none have ever been certified for use in homes. The projects are well documented online and in books, but each one is unique. For now, the stoves are used in the third world and by do-it-yourselfers who use them in outbuildings, garages, and cabins. Well, yeah, they've gone viral. I think rocket stoves are really appealing because they're efficient. They, they convert the, the wood to heat very well. They're also very effective. So uh, if anybody's been in a room with radiant heat versus force air heating, they'll know that it feels a lot better. The other thing that appeals to a lot of people is um, that you can use coppiced wood, waste wood, that sort of thing to heat with them and they can be done very, very inexpensively and used in a wide variety of applications. Three things make the rocket stove special. It's very efficient, very inexpensive, and it stores heat for a long time. Well, I think people like fire. I think that's the first thing. Um, but, you know, at the core, um, here's a technology, in a, what I would call an appropriate technology, which is cost effective. Uh, it can be done by somebody in their backyard, uh, and it doesn't have to cost $15,000 to basically create a system that's beneficial for the planet. So sustainability, in my opinion, shouldn't cost thousands and thousands of dollars. It should be accessible by a wide range of um, socioeconomic um, classes, if you will. And if you're wondering why it's called a rocket stove, have a listen. By design, a strong draft is created and you can hear the whooshing sound, hence the name rocket stove. To learn more about rocket stoves, head on down to our website at greenenergyfutures.ca. We've got photos, a blog, and a podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Drop us a comment on our Facebook page or send us a tweet or email. Thank you for watching. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.